The American Lung Association each year releases our State of the Air Report, which is an annual air quality report card that tracks individuals' exposures in cities nationwide to unhealthy levels of ground-level ozone or smog and particle pollution or soot over the course of a three-year time frame. The report also publishes a ranking of the most polluted and cleanest U.S. cities for air quality. American Lung Association just released the 25th Annual State of the Air Report. I know Dr. Brahms has been involved with, uh, with this report as a reviewer of the health effects section for many years. How long would you say you've been working with this report? Well, I think this is at least the fourth edition that I've helped with the health effects section. And you're a good one to do that based on the background that I just read. So for more background on our list for our listeners, the State of the Air Report uses recent quality assured air pollution data from county measuring stations collected by official federal, state, local, and tribal governments during the years 2020, 2021, and 2022. The year delay in reporting is necessary to collect accurate and validated data from these various agencies. Now, regrettably, out of the 3,221 counties in the United States, only about 911 counties, or less than one-third, actually can monitor for at least one pollutant. That means there are more than 71 million people who live in counties where their ozone and particle pollution levels are not being monitored. And as we will discuss, that can have health consequences. On my review of this year's report, the 2024 report shows that people in the U.S. experienced more days with very unhealthy and hazardous air quality because of particle pollution than in the history of the report dating back to 25 years. Dr. Baums, can you please give your views on what some of the causes are that lead to increases in periodic spikes in particle pollution? And in view of the years that are being covered, please especially comment on the effects of any of the pandemic and, of course, the various wildfire outbreaks that have been occurring over the last several years. Yeah, there are several reasons for why particle pollution is um, worse in many of the cities uh, that the report covers. Uh, so I'll start with wildfires because I live in California and Northern California, where we've had a lot of experience with wildfires. And uh, this has been widely publicized, but all the progress that we've made in recent years with the Clean Air Act enforcement, with reducing particle pollution from the usual sources like diesel trucks, coal-fired power plants, they have been almost uh, eliminated. The benefit has almost been eliminated by the incredible increase in particles, particle pollution from wildfire smoke. And it's not just the Mountain West where I live, where the wildfires generally occur. The prevailing winds... Uh, push the wildfire smoke across to the East Coast. Uh, you know, a few years ago, I was interviewed by a New York uh, radio station because the air quality was bad because of California wildfire smoke. And of course, this year, there's been the Canadian wildfire smoke that has actually impacted the East Coast. We had a relatively good year uh, in California uh, this year. So that's one reason. You know, another reason is that, as we're going to talk about, I think, later in the podcast, uh, the U.S. EPA has determined that the, there should be a stricter standard, national ambient air quality standard for PM particle pollution. Uh, and that means that more cities no longer have healthy air. Right. Um, I would say those are the two main reasons why we have so many cities that are are getting a bad score this year. Right. So the main particle pollution we measure is the PM 2.5, and we know it can have numerous health effects, especially when it's inhaled. Can you describe some of these health effects and comment on what populations may be at most risk for these effects? Sure. So I should say that PM 2.5 stands for fine particles or particles that are smaller than 2.5 microns. Now, what? how small is that? Well, a human hair is about 60 microns. So we're talking about 2.5 versus 60. They're very small. These particles, when inhaled, make it down into the deep lung. And that fraction of those fine particles includes even smaller particles called ultrafine particles, which can 
can go across the uh, the alveolar capillary membrane between the air sacs and the bloodstream, and then circulate around the body. So uh, these fine particles cause uh, problems for people with lung disease, especially people with asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Exacerbations uh, can occur from inhalation of PM 2.5. But also uh, those fine and ultra, those ultra fine particles can get into the systemic circulation and affect the heart. Uh, they they also kind of can get to the brain. There's now evidence that uh, PM two point five pollution is associated with uh, dementia, risk of dementia, uh, and on the other end of the life course cognitive development of kids. Uh, we know more about the uh, respiratory and cardiovascular effects of uh, PM. You know, there's increased risk of death due to cardiovascular uh, events like heart attacks and stroke, but we're learning more about these effects on the nervous system, uh, on the brain. Um, there's also increased risk for metabolic disorders like diabetes related to PM 2.5. So the more we investigate the health effects of PM 2.5, the more we find. And that's why the EPA lowered the standard, made it stricter. Got it. Now, I mean, you, the, the groups of people that are most susceptible um, are the very old, who usually have pre-existing heart and lung disease, but not always. The very young, so... Infants that are whose lungs are growing, uh, they may not grow to uh, what they would uh, have if the infant had been in a clean environment. Um, I've already mentioned younger people, middle-aged people with pre-existing lung disease, especially asthma and COPD, and then people with pre-existing cardiovascular disease. Uh, and the final group is... Uh, Low-income communities of color have a greater burden of exposure to PM 2.5 uh, because of where they live, and they also may be at increased risk for other factors outside of the air pollution, uh, like they don't have good diets because they live in a food desert, uh, they don't have access to green space, um, and they they may not get uh, as good healthcare uh, access. So. That's an area that's really important right now is the interaction between air pollution exposure and other factors that, that impact people's health.